well, this is a cross section of a red oak. Uh, it was taken about 20 feet off the ground. Um, and we split it in order to give a, a good representation of what a tree is. I have a chart here that has a nice colored blow up basically of, of what we're looking at. Uh, this chart uh, came from a company called Regis years ago that was working in the timber in industry. And the first thing we see, of course, is the, is the outer bark. Uh, there are actually two barks on a tree. There's an outer and inner bark. Uh, sometimes you'll hear that inner bark referred to as cork. Um, the inner bark and the outer bark are, are not necessarily alive uh, on a plant. They're there to protect the tree. Uh, they're there to help uh, the tree as it repairs itself. Uh, when a tree is damaged, it'll always go back and put bark on it. It's also uh, the portion of the tree that kind of works against it. In, bugs and stuff have a way of getting into and, and hiding in the bark and work against the tree. So it's a constant battle to continue to repair itself and defend itself. The, the, the next layer we see here in the picture is represented in the green. I can't really show you on, on this here because it's normally one to two cells, sometimes even three cells wide. It's known as a cambium. And imagine it as you think of the old days of a guy wearing an old red union suit, you know, and, and it's uh, underwear that covers him from head to toe, and a little flap in the back. <laughs> well, if you look at this tree, the cambium covers everything, limbing everything. It's just an outer skin. And the interesting thing about the cambium is it produces sister cells. It tree somehow communicates with it that it wants it to grow cells to make the tree larger. The tree grows from the uh, outside out, doesn't grow from the inside out per se. Um, and at the same time, it makes bark cells. Um, if the cambium in any way, shape, or form is interrupted, such as carving your initials in a tree, driving spikes in it, uh, when we go to harvest a tree and we want the tree to die in order to harvest it, we'll girdle it by cutting a section of the bark and cambium out, and that, in essence, kills the tree. The cambium is the skin, just like on our body. It has to be alive in order for the tree to continue living. So uh, you spray chemicals on the tree, the cambium is killed, the tree will die. Um, a lot of the, the insects, emerald ash borer and stuff, they get in there and they eat that whole layer of cambium and that's what kills the tree off. So it's real important that we protect that portion of our tree. If it gets damaged, the reason you want to coat it is to protect the cambium because the bugs love to eat that. There's a lot of sugars and stuff in there to eat. The next we have the sapwood. The sapwood on this tree here, actually this is, uh, was a tree that was dying so you'll see some spalding in here. The sapwood on this tree is rather small. So the only actual portion of the tree that was growing was just about, about an inch here of this tree. And this is where all the fluid is moving up into the tree for the most part. Uh, it takes water up the roots, uh, takes nutrients that it draws up, uh, takes it up to the leaf up here to the canopy, uh, sends it up to the you know, photosynthesis, basically turning it with chlorophyll back into sugars the tree can digest in order to make the cells grow. Uh, the whole process, just like you learned in, in ninth grade health science uh, in biology, <clears throat> That isn't so much important to the woodworker as basically how this particular tree, this redwood, does this. First thing we look at here, we'll see this black line up to the center of the tree, and that's called the pith. The pith is where all the original mother cells from the seed were growing, and it only stays alive for a couple of years, and then it dies off and it stays dead forever. It, it, it's, as soon as the tree begins to build heartwood, the, the actual inside of this tree is actually dead or dormant, is a preferable term we'd like to use. Uh, the, the, the way this pith grows straight uh, pretty much continues the, the, the tree's growth. It started that way. You'll actually get pith. I have a board here that will show you. Um, we'll actually get pith that uh, we found this board that was cut that had piths right down through it. And we actually were able to catch the pith of a, of a limb that came off. Uh, this is a very interesting board, but it's not really what you want to build with. Uh, the pith is really corky, it's uh, punky. You can take your fingernail and, and scratch it out so there's not a whole lot of substance there. Uh, from here, uh, this is all heartwood, you'll see growth rings as it comes out. Now the growth ring is encompassed, and you'll see here on, the, on uh, it's easier to take a look at the softwood because the growth rings are so vivid. Uh, this soft spongy part, part you see here is called the early wood. And that is the tree in the spring begins to grow rapidly. Uh, throughout the year, it's growing pretty fast. And then as it comes into the fall, it starts to slide into dormancy. In other words, it's shutting itself down to protect itself for the winter. And the late wood 
is a very distinct as it slowly slows it down and starts compressing and it you know just kind of packs it up its growth cells and you get this distinct line so one light colored one dark is one year's growth uh, so you can go through and count just quickly just the dark rings just the late wood and pretty much come up derive with the, the age of the tree. Now when you get into the pith, add three years because it takes the trees roughly that long to grow and you won't see a whole lot of differential uh, growth in there in the center for the most part on average and that should give you some idea uh, of how old the tree is. Now don't count out in the bark because the bark and the sapwood are being produced at the same ratio. So don't come out here where you can see growth rings out into the bark and add those up. It doesn't start growing out here. It starts growing in the camdium and goes both directions. All right. So um, I'm going to hold up here a, a piece of, of red oak. We have these long growth in the spring here. And then this boundary here you see with all these pores, this is actually the early wood starts. So early in the spring, this tree is moving a lot of water quickly up to its canopy, and then it stops, and it grows through here, and then it's got a real quick dormancy. So what I can take by looking at this sample, because the dormancy wasn't very hard, that this tree most likely was in a temperate zone or a warmer zone where it didn't have to defend itself. If I take a look at this yellow pine, I see that its early wood is pretty fairly even, but it's got very hard, very defined late wood rings. So what I can understand from this is this was most likely very high altitude and very cold where this was growing. So its growing season was much shorter than this, this piece of uh, red oak here. When this starts to grow, we get our growth rings. We actually start getting a, a second aspect of this tree that as the, the cells are growing in a circle back and forth uh, in, around here on this sample here, we also, and I'm going to try to tip this up so it can be seen a little bit better, um, you'll see these lines that are coming out of this. And these are called medullary rays or pith rays, or for the most part, they're just simply called rays. And the, uh, as you're looking at this, if this is, these rays are very vivid to the eye. A lot of woods, because even pine has ray lines, but it's not very, it, it's, it's, there, there may be one or two cells wide where the ray lines on this, this is actually a white oak sample. I, I referred to it as red oak earlier, I apologize. Uh, so as you guys that are big wood identifiers, you're freaking out, I, I just corrected it. Um, the, the ray lines of white oak are probably somewhere between uh, five, seven, even up to 20 cells wide. So it becomes to the point where the eye, they're quite visual to the eye. So. <clears throat> Imagine, if you would, a screen on your window where you have uh, veining or even slats in a chair where you've got webbing back and forth. And if you had just webbing going back and forth and you sat on that chair, your butt would go through the chair. But if I lay webbing the other direction, now it holds your weight. This is what the ray lines do. These are the ray cells. They're actually going through and they're running perpendicular to the growth of the tree. And they go all the way out to the bark and they are basically the strength of the tree. The more ray lines a tree has, the stronger it is. Uh, you've seen the, the, or heard the terms, the mighty oak, you know, it doesn't bend with the wind, it's gonna blow over. And you'll see white oaks and, and some red oaks laying in the forest down with their entire root ball uh, projecting up out of the ground. The tree did not give way. But if you look and you see pines where the tops of them even two, three feet across will be snapped clear off because of the, uh, of the wind, and that's because it doesn't have a very uh, involved system of a rays. Mm -hmm.